going on guys? Max here and I want to show you a game I've been making for a little while. The whole thing is mostly for the fun of game development and to prototype kick-ass ideas. In this intro episode we'll first take a quick look at my design stage, after which we'll jump right behind the scenes and take a sneak peek at the journey I took to bring it all together. I plan on sharing my ups and downs of game development through a whole series of episodes just like this one. Hope you guys enjoy it. What you're currently seeing is a time lapse of my initial brainstorming session. My goal from the get go was to create a quick and dirty, rough around the edges first person shooter, staying true to the ideals of old while incorporating stellar modern day elements. During this brain dump, I focused on writing out the gameplay mechanics and elements that I could create with what I knew then. Of course, in the back of my head, I was aware that I need to learn much in terms of programming and game development specifically within Unity, both in order to create the base mechanics as well as the more novel and engaging gameplay elements I wish to include. Even though I have a substantial amount of game development experience, mainly creating 3D art, I knew that as with everything, things take more time to complete than you at first consider and are significantly tougher to do. Then again, that's where the real fun is and sense of accomplishment, for if it was easy, it would have been virtually pointless. So I decided to start in miniature and work my way up. By that I mean create something that I could play and iterate upon the mantra I had was that great games aren't made, they're played, and thus my main concern wasn't to create a bible of a design doc and then rewrite 90% mid-production, but start with a rough, concise and to the point design spec that I could iterate, improve and have fun with. After a few hours of back and forth I settled on this schematic, which in essence outlines the basic mechanics that I felt were crucial to nail down before development was begun in earnest. Once this step was complete, I got the ball rolling and started roughing out the game. Deciding to create a first person shooter by myself, I knew I had my work cut out for me. So I started by pouring myself over any and all material I could find. This included information seemingly unconnected with game development that I felt was useful and interesting to know. Much of what I had to learn and orient myself to was scripting within the Unity game development engine. I had a considerable amount of programming experience before embarking on this adventure, but what I was lacking was knowledge on how to interface with game objects specifically within the Unity engine. Keeping true to the notions I put forth earlier, I commenced learning how to spawn objects, interact with them, and move them about the level, and destroy them after a fixed set of conditions, in addition to methods of playing sound effects and spawning particles in efficient and resource-conserving ways. The first artsy thing I created for the game was a wall tile, and two trim sections. Utilizing these few elements I could lend a surprising amount of depth and detail to environments, coupled with some clever UV tricks to maximize texture usage. Once I had completed a few more models, I set upon expanding my level from a mere room to an actual environment that the player could navigate. This required a multiplicity of tiles to make things visually engaging, thus I ended up creating up more than a few, to really give the level that extra bit of depth. This is by no means a complete set, I expect to add a much larger variety and volume as development progresses. After the rough sketch of the level was assembled, I plunged even deeper into code and fleshed out the wall mounted turret's behavior and firing mechanic. This was more complex than it first seemed, as the turret had to perform several distance and visibility assessments, in addition to a physics test to check for nearby explosives and other destructibles. Having become satisfied with it, I saw that there was one obvious, yet crucial thing missing, an equalizer so I eagerly set out to create a quick weapon to give the player a fighting chance. I based a part of my freestyle idea on the plasma weapon from the Fallout universe. I wanted something that looked rough and rugged, but was simple to operate. This process was mostly straightforward. I created a detail mesh, then its render counterpart with UVs and proper smoothing groups, after which I baked and textured the thing. Once I had a weapon and an enemy wrapped up, I plunged even deeper into level design and commenced to work on novel prototype areas that the player could visit. During this development cycle I also focused on making animated objects, explosive canisters, doorways, particle effects, sounds and a second test enemy. One facet which wasn't given due attention up to this point was audio, itself being a focal point in what makes the game truly legendary. Realizing this, I decided to divert some of my time to creating various pickup sounds, along with a few one-off stings that I could scatter on the level to really enhance the ambience. 
I wasn't really ready to commit in earnest to developing a cohesive score at the time, since I felt there was much to do in the other departments, mainly polishing the level and its enemies. It was roughly during this point in development that my prototype game started running quite slowly. Playing in a 1080p, I got around 40 frames a second along with thousands of draw calls. Now, while this might seem somewhat okay, it was far from it, since my computer and graphics card are overall well above average. This realization caused me to dread the game's performance on other systems. Ultimately, no matter how innovative or groundbreaking a game is, no gamer will play it if it runs at 5 frames a second. So I did the prudent thing. I ran Unity's built-in profiler while playing the game to gain a solid understanding what was hindering and bogging down my performance. I realized that I had overestimated the strength of deferred lighting and rendering lights. Thus, after a few tests and a good brainstorming session, I decided to switch to light maps. As soon as I was up to speed with this faster setup, I continued to iterate and add more layers to level and gameplay, improving and creating new areas in addition to commencing work on my own custom-tailored pathfinding algorithm. Right now it's still very much a work in progress, but as you can see, something like this would be of great importance as it would allow me to create intelligent enemies and characters that could navigate the game world without bumping into obstacles or each other. The reason I have chosen to develop it myself as opposed to picking an existing AI script was so that I could have a system that is perfectly tailored to my game and will allow ease of extension and expansion. And obviously, there is another reason, and that is it's just ridiculously fun and challenging to create something complicated. During development I also experimented quite a few things, from models and effects to complete scripts. Those were mainly created out of passion and a thirst for knowledge, but gave me an unprecedented volume of readily available material from which I could pick interesting avenues that I could further investigate, explore and then properly implement into the game. So now we arrive at the present. It has been quite a journey since I've started this in my spare time. At the onset, I had no idea it would grow to such a scale. When I started out, all that I wanted to create was a small game and toy with Unity. As I progressed further, learning its ins and outs, I kept layering this virtual canvas with vigor, adding a model here and a script there, until a stage was reached when I began taking this toy a bit more seriously, for it was easy to see that it was not a mere toy any longer but something which transcends a simple test project and warrants considerably more effort. Looking back, I am exceedingly pleased with the progress I've made, both in terms of learning Unity and developing the game and its overlapping systems. Glancing forward, I am filled with excitement when I imagine all the great things to come. This is still very much a first step, but an important one. I'll try to release these development episodes in a timely manner, but since creating episodes and simultaneously developing the game is a monumental undertaking, it might take a bit until a new episode is up. Stay tuned though, there are many polygons to create, pixels to polish and lines of code to write. This road is a long road, a tough road, but not at all lacking its silver lining as it is a pleasant and entirely rewarding one. For the next episode I'm gonna add some real enemies that can actually move around, find their path to the player and engage them in a unique manner, as well as more weapons and probably a complete level redesign and art style re-evaluation. I'll also probably release mini episodes to share with you guys any progress made. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this development diary and hopefully learned something from it. Be sure to drop me a line in the comments section if you have some input to share or subscribe if you want to see more of these. Thanks guys.